Welcome to the Las Vegas Crime Lab. Please enter your name. To begin your orientation with Grissom, click on Start beneath the first case on the left. Welcome to the CSI Crime Lab Graveyard Shift. I'm Gil Grissom, and you must be the new intern. I know it's your first night, but we're short-handed and... Grissom. Yeah, Jim. We're just leaving. We've got a homicide. I know you've got good problem-solving skills or you wouldn't be here. You'll have to jump right in on this crime scene with me. John Webster said, death hath a thousand doors to let out life. Let's find out which one our victim took. The location tab at the bottom of the screen allows you to access various locations. To head to the crime scene, click on the hotel location now. Good. Other crime scene locations will appear here as you uncover more places to visit. Three CSI locations are available on the right, but we'll visit those later. For now, we'll go directly to the hotel. First officer, fill us in. Let's see, manager got a call from a guest complaining about noise. He checked it out, found the TV going pretty loud. And this young lady here, who didn't exactly need it, turned up. No signs of forced entry. Manager's name is Bert Suston. He's pretty bent out of shape, but cooperative enough. You can question him if you want. Wish I had more for you. It's a start, and the crime scene will have plenty to say. Probably a good idea to start with our victim. Throughout the investigation, you will often want to examine things more closely. To look at the body, move your pointer onto it and click. Excellent. Notice that when you passed the pointer over the body, it changed to a green arrow. This indicates that you can inspect something in greater detail. Look at that. There's some bruising on her neck. These marks strongly suggest she was strangled, likely a violent killing. Perhaps there's more we can learn. Notice the case file has been updated. This means that information has been added to a file on a suspect or victim. Click on the case file icon in the bottom right to look at it. Case files hold a summary of everything you've learned about the suspects and victims you meet. This is the file for our victim. To look at the case file for the hotel owner, click on the Suspects tab. In addition to general information, suspect case files contain categories for means, motive, and opportunity. You will often need at least one of these filled to be able to get suspects brought in for an interrogation, and all of them for an arrest. Now, click on the Close button. Let's take a closer look now at the bruising Grissom mentioned. Move the pointer over the victim's neck and click. Notice the Tools tab is automatically selected on the toolbar at the bottom of the screen when you're close enough to use one. Tools are categorized into either Collection or Detection tools. Click on the Detection sub-tab. Rolling over any of the tools gives you a brief description of that tool. Find the UV light and double-click on it now. Find the UV light and double-click on it now. Double-clicking gets you a more detailed description of the tool. It looks like it might be the right one for this job. Click on Close. To use the UV light, click once to select it. Now, pass the UV light over the bruised area and click. Deep bruising patterns suggest a ligature, sexual ritual, or premeditated murder. To back out of this close-up view, move the pointer to the left or right-hand side of the screen and click. Notice the pointer changed to an exit arrow when you did that. Now, we'll look at collecting evidence. Click on the torn piece of cloth on the bed, left of the victim. Sometimes you'll need to search for trace evidence before collecting an object. 
In this case, select the magnifying scope under the detection tools by clicking on it. Now pass the magnifying scope tool carefully over the cloth area to look for very small or hidden trace evidence. Now pass the magnifying scope tool carefully over the cloth area to look for very small or hidden trace evidence. Looks like a tiny strand of hair. Whenever you find something with a magnifying scope, single click on it for a closer look. Just a hair, right? A tiny thing and yet so very big. Note, it is not the victim's hair color. Someone else was here, in close proximity to the deceased. Select the tweezers by clicking on the Collection Tool sub-tab, then clicking on the tweezers. Now, move the tweezers over the hair and click. Evidence you collect is added to your Evidence folder. To look at it, click on the Evidence tab now. Evidence is categorized here by type. The hair you just collected is a form of trace evidence. Click on the Trace Print sub-tab now. You can re-examine a piece of previously collected evidence here and review what you've learned about it. To re-examine the hair, double-click on the hair icon. These evidence descriptions will often update throughout the case, so check them regularly. Click on the Close button now. It would be a good idea to collect the torn sheet as well. We're a little too close right now, so exit this close-up view by clicking on either side of the screen. Good. Now under the Collection Tool tab, select the rubber gloves. Use the gloves to pick up the torn sheet by clicking on it. Torn from the bed? Easily strangle someone with that. This could very well be our murder weapon. Back out of this close-up view by clicking on either side of the screen. Click on the side of the screen one more time. Well done. Next, we should interview the hotel owner behind you. Pan around the crime scene by moving the cursor to the side of the screen, then click on the owner. Look, I know a girl died and it's a shame, but I got a business to run. Bird Sustin, I manage the hotel. What do you want to know? Questions will often be available for you to ask suspects and victims. The questions will vary depending on the evidence and information you've collected. To select a question, click it with your pointer. Showgirl on a strip. Nice enough. Never made no trouble. Kind of a regular here. Made a half dozen visits over the past couple of weeks. No credit cards. Strictly cash and carry. Capiche? If she had company tonight, I don't know who. My business is minding my own business. We only give keys out to registered guests. My uh, patrons don't like to be dropped in on Catch My Drift. And I got the only master key. No idea. First name was Kylie. Last, uh, well, that kind of varied. Smith, Jones. Seems I remember her using a different name first time she filled out the checking card. Sure, I figured you'd want to see it. There's an address on it, too. Now, do you mind? Cops hanging around ain't all that helpful for my business. Exit the conversation by clicking on either side of the screen. Now let's look at that new bit of evidence. Click on Documents within your Evidence tab, then double-click the registration card. You have just found a new location. You'll want to visit it at some point. Close the pop-up. If you're stuck, you can ask for hints from your CSI partner. Find Grissom in the view above and click your pointer over him. To select a question, click it with your pointer. What do you want me to look at? Getting help with evidence will update the evidence description with a hint about it. From the Evidence tab, click and drag any piece of evidence over Grissom. When you ask for a hint, you may learn something new or something you already know. However, all hints will count against you in your final performance evaluation. Click Close. 
Now, back out of this view by clicking on either side of the screen. That's the end of your training. The rest is up to you. You can process the crime scene further to find more clues, visit the CSI offices, or visit your new location. When you're ready to quit, hit the escape key on your keyboard. Good luck. This is an expensive bauble to leave behind. May rule out robbery as a likely motive. Initials KY engraved on it. This could help us establish Kylie's identity. Our killer may be leaving us a message. Try using a similar tool. In ancient Greece, Families put a coin in the mouths of their late loved ones to pay the ferryman to cross the river Styx. Could be our killer is related to our victim and has a bent for mythology, or maybe this is a final insult. There's nothing special there. We can't use that here. Since the TV was on, somebody probably used this recently. Maybe the killer. Let's find out. We can't use that here. Maybe our killer needed to wash his hands of this crime. Let's take a closer look. Some kind of stain on the sink here. We should try to detect what it is. We can't use that here. We should definitely have Greg take a look at this in the lab. We can't use that here. So, you're Grissom's latest victim, huh? Well, I'm in charge of the victims who aren't still walking around. Albert Robbins, welcome aboard. I'll do my best to answer your questions. How our Vic died, what the murder weapon was, maybe even the deceased's identity. And remember, I'm dealing with trace evidence you weren't even aware of at the crime scene, so don't be a stranger. When you need information about the body, just ask.
asphyxia due to strangulation. The hyoid bone, just under the bruising on her neck, was broken. Quick death, anyway. Found traces of skin under three of her nails. Not a lot, but enough to indicate she may have been trying to fight off her assailant. You can take it with you. Ran a rape kit, too. Sexual activity, but no sign of assault. Fairly narrow ligature marks like these might indicate a rope or cord or even a twisted length of sheet was used. I don't know if you knew this already, but our victim had hepatitis C, found interferon in her system. Nothing else unusual, very healthy young woman otherwise. After death, a human body generally drops two degrees the first hour and another degree every hour after that, with a four hour give or take. Given the core temperature of the victim's liver and the ambient temp of the crime scene, I estimate she was killed between 11 and 11.30 p.m. There are petechiae in the victim's eyelids, tiny pinpoint hemorrhages caused when the blood backs up into the capillaries. But with an internal injury like this, you won't have much, if any, of the victim's blood at the scene. Any blood you find is more likely the killer's. So you're the new pledge around the CSI frat house. How do you like the initiation so far? Look, I know what it's like to be thrown in the pool and told to swim. I'm here for you. Greg Sanders, confidentially, I'm the guy who keeps this party hopping. Next to me, computer is your best buddy. It's hooked up to a number of search databases. Just drag the evidence onto either side of the computer and click search. To make comparisons, just drag evidence onto both sides and click compare. If you got anything, you'll find out right away. fingerprint could still be useful though we need to compare it to a full print to establish a match hey you can't scan that into the computer hey you can't scan that into the computer hey you can't scan that into the computer don't be afraid of the microscope it's your friend too Want to look at something under it? Just drag any trace evidence onto either side of the lens. To compare two things, drag the second item onto the other available slot. If you find a match, your evidence and case files will update. Sweet, huh? You can't put that under the microscope. You can't put that under the microscope. You can't put that under the microscope. Plenty of DNA for me to draw comparisons. Hey, good news. I found enough DNA for a profile, but comparing it to another sample is where the fun begins. Hey, you can't scan that into the computer. Hey, you can't scan that into the computer. Check that out under the microscope. See if you can match it to a corroborating piece of evidence. 
What you got there is a partial print. Tricky little things, partials. Not enough info to call up a rap sheet in the database. Best thing you can hope for is finding an existing print or rap sheet and compare the partial to it. to see you. We've been shorthanded on the night shift for too long. I'm Captain Jim Brass. Anything you need on the law enforcement side, I'm your new best friend. You want somebody brought in for questioning, need a warrant, an arrest? I'll make it happen. So what's up on the hotel killing? or anything useful off money. This is no exception. Came up blank. Sorry. Sorry. Can't do anything with that. Just a torn bed sheet. Nothing special about the fabric or the way it was torn. Ms. Strickland? Jenny Strickland? Yes. Gil Grissom, Las Vegas Crime Lab. My assistant and I would like to ask you a few questions. Go ahead. Ms. Strickland, a young woman was killed tonight. Apparently she filled out the hotel's check-in card using your name and address. What? Mine? That's right. We believe her first name was Kylie. Do you know anyone by that name? Sorry, I don't know any Kylies. Anyone could have got my name and address out of the phone book. got killed, is it? Maybe we can answer your question, Miss Strickland, if you'll tell us about Karen. My best friend when I was in middle school, Karen Yardstrom. We took all our Christmas money and bought matching bracelets, inscribed our initials on them. Oh, wow. I haven't heard from Karen in years. She isn't the one who... That's a strong possibility. Oh, how terrible. Awful. Oh, we ran in different cliques, you know, in high school. Hers was kind of a rougher crowd, but I never thought, never dreamed. <sighs> I'm sorry, Mr. Grissom. I need to go back inside now. I hope I've been helpful. You have. I'm sorry to bring you such sad news, Miss Strickland. Let's talk to Brass in his office, get him to track down Karen Yardstrom's real address. Let's check that TV for prints, too. Hotel room like this, we may have to sort through dozens, but the right one may be waiting. Need me for something? Sure. Seems she lived in the Hamilton apartments. I'll send a unit to open it up for you. Yeah, I looked into our Vic's brilliant showbiz career, which consisted of one chorus line gig with a production that shut down a couple of weeks ago.
Hey guys, what's up? Hotel owner doesn't exactly have a squeaky clean background, although 10 years can change a person. Looks like Kylie kept things simple at home. Neat, orderly, almost compulsive. Sometimes a control freak away from home cuts loose, goes a little wild. A prescription for interferon. It's used in treatment of hep C infections. Dated yesterday. Kylie may have just found out about her condition. Receipts from different hotels, ordered chronologically. Hey, Kylie, it's your buddy Bart. Forget about me. Well, you ain't slipped my mind. Not when you owe me three bills for that TV you trashed. Oh, unless, of course, you can think up another way to settle up. Hmm? You can do that. <laughs> Seems our hotel manager knew Kylie better than he was letting on. Let's bring this information to brass. There's no prince here. Hundreds of years, investigators have examined correspondence and address books for clues. Today, that means checking out a victim's PC. Let's look at her calendar. Her last scheduled meeting was at 10 p.m. with one Devin Rogers at our hotel. Possible suspect. We'll need to talk to Brass to find Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. What do you need? It's a magnetic chromium dioxide audio cassette tape. Nothing special to tell you about it. Analyze the meds inside, and just like the label says, it's interferon. Looks like the pharmacy did their job. I was able to lift some latent prints from it, too. They look like partials.
Sorry, can't do anything with that. They're just hotel receipts. Nothing special about them. Man, I hope she got air miles for all these. about how well he knew the young woman. Sure, he has legit access to the room, but any way you slice it, I can find a judge who'll give us a warrant. Okay, just for a change of pace, let's try the truth this time. You got no right taking that tone. I'm cooperating, ain't I? I told you before, I got nothing to do with this mess. I suppose you never made a mistake, huh? I paid for my thrills. I'm a businessman now, strictly legit. So I knew the girl, big friggin' whoop. A showgirl, usually quiet, but she lost it last month. Went all rock act on me, busted up a TV. 300 big ones to replace that sucker. Kid keeps promising to pay me back and nothing. Hell, I wouldn't whack a kid over trivial crap like that. What'd he take me for? Nonetheless, Mr. Sustin, Kylie is dead, murdered in your hotel. Listen, my place ain't the Ritz, okay? Get the odd rough crowd so I take my share of bumps and nicks. Comes with the territory. What's that, a warrant? What the hell is this? I didn't do anything to that poor kid. <sighs> Take your sample and get out of my life already. Thanks, we will. Our intern here is going to swab some epithelial cells from your mouth and take a hair sample with tweezers. Hey guys, what's up? Hey, you can't scan that into the computer. You can't scan that into the computer. What you got there is a partial print. Tricky little things, partials. Not enough info to call up a rap sheet in the database. Best thing you can hope for is finding an existing print or rap sheet and compare the partial to it.
Sorry. Can't do anything with that. You can't put that under the microscope. schedule on the search screen of our lab computer and run a search. See what comes up. Devin, the last person in our victim's date book, has a criminal record. Some recent temper control problems. Let's file that in our suspicious folder. anything with that. The devil's in the details, and it looks like we've implicated this devil. Sure, I can do that. Our intern here is going to swab some epithelial cells from your mouth and take a hair sample with tweezers. Hey, go easy with that thing, will you? What, this your first night and I'm your guinea pig? What can I do for you? Yeah, the files tell an interesting story about her. Seems she reported a stalker just six months ago. I'd like to tell you we busted the bum, but I'd be lying. And my gut says it's no coincidence she's on a silver tray now. Partial print places him at the scene. Nice. On its own, that might not cut it, but add that to his name popping up so prominently on the Vic schedule? Oh, yeah. Consider the warrant issued. We appreciate you cooperating with us, Mr. Rogers. Cut the BS. You have a warrant. What do you want? Kylie. Oh, yeah, sure. The showgirl. I know who you mean. Know her? How? We were just, you know, friendly acquaintances. We'd get together, hang out, party a little. <laughs> nice kid, sweet. Not hard, like some of the dancers. Everybody liked her. Somebody didn't like her. She was murdered tonight. Kylie? Oh, no, not Kylie. What kind of sick creep would hurt a nice kid like the... Hey, wait a minute. You're not... Now, you don't think I... No way. Never. I'm no saint, but I never killed no one. Check it out. Jeez, oh, I don't really remember. You know how it is with social stuff. Two weeks, maybe? All right, okay, I won't lie to you. I saw her. I saw her tonight. Where? Hotel, way down the strip. Champagne Hotel, I think. Yeah, I got a few cuts and stuff. Since when is that a crime? It isn't, but it might prove that you committed one. Well, I do now. And I ain't too happy about having to get myself checked, either. What for? I got a right to know what you wanted for, don't I? I mean, I didn't kill her or anything. Why should I help you guys entrap me? 
Mr. Rogers, the DNA sample can help clear you. We're trying to eliminate suspects from our list. We have a warrant, sir. You can give it to us, or we can take it. Fine. Our intern here is going to swab some epithelial cells from your mouth and take a hair sample with tweezers. Ow. Take it easy. Couldn't you have been a bit gentler with that thing? Hey guys, what's up? The DNA reference sample from Rogers, but the real story unfolds when I compare it against another sample. So I did a comparison, tested the sink swab DNA with Rogers sample, no luck. I guess that wasn't his blood in the sink. Now, I thought a comparison between the Rogers blood DNA and the skin from the fingernails would make sense. The result of my sweat and tears? Jackpot! Mr. Devin Rogers co-starred in a scrappy little show with our victim. Check that out under the microscope. See if you can match it to a corroborating piece of evidence. Okay, good. We've got a DNA reference sample from the hotel owner. This is begging for a comparison. So, I ran the hotel owner's sample against the blood swab from the bathroom. Well, we have a winner. Hotel owner's DNA matches the blood from the bathroom. Only since Mr. Sustin owns and operates the hotel, this may not mean much, if anything. Now, I knew you'd be asking for a comparison between the skin DNA and the hotel owners, so I went for it. But, no luck. It's not the same. Someone else left some obvious signs of their presence on your victim. Doesn't look like these hairs match. They look identical. Strong likelihood our Mr. Rogers was in that hotel room around the time of the killing. Yes? Ah, oh, yeah, well, you have something here. This rap sheet gives us plenty of excuse to talk to this charmer again. I'll have him hauled right in. Last rocket scientist to book that room busted the mirror. And guess who cut himself cleaning up the damn mess? I bled on the sink and the new mirror. Then I cleaned up after myself. After all that work, I turned on the tube and watched the news. Work for you? What can I do for you? You say this Rogers was slotted to meet Kylie just before her murder? Don't need any more justification than that. We'll bring the boy right in. It was? <laughs> yeah, I can see that. She liked it rough. Clawed my arm just to get a rise. Now, tell me if this sounds familiar, Mr. Rogers. The day Kylie returned from getting her sobering diagnosis, she did the right thing. She called anyone that she'd had sexual contact with. You asked to meet her at the hotel to talk about it, but your anger came out when she arrived. Kylie scratched you, defending herself, so you forcibly tied her to the bedpost and blindfolded her. The walls in that hotel are paper thin, so you turned up the volume on the television using the remote, which you then pitched to the floor. You tore a strip from the bed sheet, which was when a hair from your head fell into the folds. Then you wrapped the sheet around the woman's throat and finished her off. Your revenge taken, you left, but not before leaving a little tip. Make up all the stories you want. They're bull. Start to finish. Find yourself some other sucker. In your mind, that young woman killed you. So you killed her. That ain't what happened. She was alive when I left her. I swear it. We'll let a jury decide that. But the evidence says otherwise. It never ends. You did a good job on this case. You found a suspect that meets the requirements for means, motive, and opportunity. That's all we can do. The rest we leave up to the district attorney. Now. Let's do your evaluation.
great work, but asking for help costs you in your final evaluation. See if you can do as well without using any hints. I need you to go investigate another crime. Sarah will meet you on the site and give you the details. She's one of our best. You can learn a lot from her. Looks like somebody's been playing with matches. What we seem to have here is a break-in and arson. According to his statement, Jason Gray, the homeowner, left his house around 11.30 p.m. to go for a run. He was gone for a little over an hour, came back to find his home office ablaze. Got the fire out, but lost most of his office gear, computer, desk, the works. We've already canvassed the neighborhood, but nobody saw anything or anybody suspicious. Wish I had more for you. That's what we're here for, officer. We'll start processing the scene, but we're gonna wanna chat with Mr. Gray. Sorry we had to meet here at the scene. I'm Sarah Seidel. Glad you could come aboard CSI. It was getting kind of old being the new kid myself. Anyway, I hear good things about you. We're gonna pair up just fine. We'll want to test for accelerants, things that started the fire. This looks like a typical burn pattern, lots of charred samples and residual gas in the air. We can't use that here. We can't use that here. I'm Jason Gray. You the officers who wanted to speak with me? We're with the Las Vegas Crime Lab, Mr. Gray. Criminalists. Sorry about your house. We just have a few questions. Anything I can do to help. I hope there's some chance you can find whoever did this to me. Well, as I told the officer, I went out to get a little exercise. I do this when I can't sleep. It must have been around 11.30 because it was after the news. At any rate, I wasn't gone for much more than an hour. Hour 15 at the most. But as I was walking home, I could see a strange light coming from my office. And then I caught a whiff of smoke and the alarms went off. Mentally, I mean. I rushed in and somehow managed to put the fire out, best I could. Well, I haven't taken a complete inventory, but obviously my computer, and with it, all my files and research, projects, client database. It'll take months to reconstruct it all. I should have kept backup disks in a safe deposit box, but damn hindsight. At least my insurance will cover some of it. Maliciously, you mean? I don't know, really. Not unless... Well, there is one person, but I can't imagine... James Ritchie. He's my biggest rival in the field. Aviation design. Anyway, we go way back. Not all of it good. He's been stealing clients away for a long time. And he's got a checkered past, to say the least. Still find it hard to believe. He's got several offices around town. I couldn't hazard a guess where he'd be right now. Are you sure you haven't done this before? Little luck. Greg will tell us something useful from the sample. There's a redial button. Maybe we should find out who the last person was on the other end. Yeah, 
Leave a message. Pleasant. Sounds like Ray keeps good company. Hmm. Fire could have started here. House fires typically double in size every 30 seconds. Gray seems to have gotten to it pretty quickly. Looks like some burned wood scraps. Beautiful. Hydrocarbons and most other accelerants fluoresce under ultraviolet light. This is a good sample for Gray. Hmm, it's colored and rounded. Definitely not window glass. We can't use that here. There's no prints here. There's no prints here. We can't use that here. Every fire has its share of survivors. This is not one of them. If the perps were grabbing up Gray's papers before lighting them, we might find a survivor. Fingerprints. Too fragile to dust, but there's other ways to check for prints. Every fire has its share of survivors. This is not one of them. If the perps were grabbing up Gray's papers before lighting them, we might find a survivor. Fingerprints. Too fragile to dust, but there's other ways to check for prints. We can't use that here. Try using a similar tool. We can't use that here. We can't use that here. We can't use that here. There's nothing special there. We can't use that here. We can't use that here. Try using a similar tool. We can't use that here. Try using a similar tool. We can't use that here. There's nothing special there. Every fire has its share of survivors. This is not one. Glass on the floor could mean the window was broken from outside, so our arsonist could have been standing just outside that window before the fun began.
This lighter's an antique, so maybe it's just a collectible, but the cap's been screwed off and it's empty. Anything that could have started this fire is important. Collect it. Rag fragments. Smells greasy. I don't imagine Mr. Gray was working on his car in here, do you? Ever hear of a Molotov cocktail? That's one part rag, one part bottle, and one part liquid accelerant. Could be what started this fire. Does that look like a shoe print to you? Me neither. Cast it. Maybe Greg can give us a lab rat's eye view that'll tell us what the heck it is. Grissom says let the evidence tell the story. So. If this window was broken from here, why so many shards outside? We got an arson case and need some tests run. Well, and it's a pleasure to see you too, Sarah. But I'm starting to feel like this relationship is kind of lopsided. I give, 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 you take, take, take. How about I make it up to you by giving you this evidence to analyze for us? Somehow I don't think I'm making my point. So, you got a hot case, huh? Yeah, well, let's have a look. You're gonna love this. It's as simple as A, B, C. A, it's lighter fluid. B, it's not lighter fluid. It's from the fuel oil number one family. Or C, it's both. Sorry, can't do anything with that. Well, what this isn't is a shoe print. It may be a knee print, but I'm fresh out of knee print databases, so I can't do much with it at the moment. Traces of accelerant. What you have here is lighter fluid. That's wine bottle glass. I could have told you that back in my college days. What I couldn't have told you is the chemical composition is very similar to glass used in bottle factories, South American bottle factories. And I found traces of an accelerant from the fuel oil number one family to boot. Do I have to tell you it's a lighter and that it once contained lighter fluid? What we have here is a rag containing the delicate bouquet of fuel oil number one family, an accelerant. But it's a popular rag with lots of other party guests, dirt, grease, and a turbine oil used only in commercial aviation. Strong possibility that our fuel oil number one accelerant was jet fuel. And one more tasty tidbit for you, that rag's made of cotton fiber, and I'm not talking an old t-shirt here. It's exotic, one of two of almost 700 known cotton germplasms one of which can only be found in Guatemala, while the other is native to northern regions of Ecuador. Now that I've compared it to the earlier sample, I can say without question, it was aviation jet fuel. 
rag, jet fuel, and a broken bottle. One Molotov cocktail coming right up, or that is, apart. Hey guys, what's up? These hackle marks tell us a lot of force was used to break the window, and that the outside surface was traveling away from the source of impact. Fancy way of saying, that window is broken from the inside. We have an APHIS match to James Ritchie, charged with insurance fraud four years ago. Case was dropped, however. Any breaks in the arson? Well, let's pull him up. Seems Mr. Ritchie has a prior for insurance fraud. Promising. Charges were eventually dropped. But you know what they say, where there's smoke? His company has a few offices scattered around Vegas. But the downtown branch seems to be the HQ. I'd start there. Heard about what happened to Gray. Shame. Happy to help. Uh, if you can keep it short, I have a meeting in 15 minutes. Well, strange as it may seem, considering my business, I don't. My obsession is sailing. You've probably already learned that Gray has a pilot's license. I think I remember hearing he keeps a plane here in town. He's a competitor, just not much of one. We both manage companies that design commercial airplane prototypes, and his business has been in a tailspin for more than a year. <laughs> it's not my fault his dissatisfied clients come looking for a home. <laughs> Why would I? He's barely on my radar. I would say, if anything, Gray feels threatened by yours truly. You know, he even approached me, begging to buy him out a couple of weeks back, as if I wanted what was left of his excuse for a company. I didn't threaten him, I laughed in his damn face. <laughs> you can't seriously think I had anything to do with... Look, I'm not Jason Gray's biggest fan, but I don't go around burning houses down, even when I don't care for somebody. As for my whereabouts, you might check with the other 150 passengers on my flight, coming in from Chicago, Flight 157. I have no criminal record. Those charges were dropped. This is still America, isn't it? So what? I have had dealings with Gray. We've exchanged our share of documents over the years. Uh, if you're fishing for those drug rumors, I won't be part of that. However I may feel about Gray, I don't intend to get involved in character assassination. Anyway, what a man does in his private life is his own concern. What can I do for you? We'll just check civil aviation records and see. Corporate Learjet Tango 146, registered to his company. Last place it was hangered was Henderson Executive Airport. See if it's still there. Give me a second. Airline manifest confirms Ritchie was on that flight. Got in at 12.12. fuel purchase not long ago from the International Airport in Quito, Ecuador. Tango 146. Gray's plane, all right.
We can't use that here. They're locked. Guess we won't be getting in there. Looks like our high-flying exec wasn't exactly candid with us about the state of his corporate affairs. We have a man seriously behind schedule here, facing a loss of a cool million and a half. That's what we CSIs call a motive. So our hot case is heating up, and you need the Sanders touch. Without me, it's all guesswork, right? And Grissom just hates hunches. You know what else Grissom hates? Slow lab work. and the fragment from Gray's home share the same rare cotton germplasm. Species is definitely of Ecuadorian origin. You guys are moving fast on this arson case. Got a new lead? Guy torched his own house, huh? Well, let's bring him in for a chat. Maybe he's just burning to confess. Mr. Gray, I think you know why you're here. We've gathered considerable evidence indicating that you lied to us about the fire at your home. Cooperate. Make it easier on us, we'll make it easier on you. I've told you everything I can think of. No intention on my part to be deceptive. I don't know anything about that. I'm the victim here, you know. Sometimes I purchase wine when I'm down there. There's a fine local winery. So what? What am I being accused of? Drinking and driving? Are you joking? Of course I do. I own a plane and I'm active in the aviation industry. Jet fuel's good for killing weeds. I always keep a little in my back shed. I have a bunch of those rags. I don't know where I picked them up. There must be thousands of rags like that in Nevada. What business is that of yours? My office is a charred ruin. I lose most of my key records and you're nosing into my clients? We have all the evidence we need to make an arrest, Mr. Gray. I just wanted to give you an opportunity to make it easy for both of us. We can do this the hard way. I... I guess you're right. What's the use? You got the goods on me. You're right. I was way behind on that contract, looking right into the face of financial ruin. It had been building up over the last few weeks. A pressure, but it was spur of the moment, an impulse. I grabbed a rag and that bottle of jet fuel in the shed and smashed it on my office floor, you know, to suggest somebody pitched a Molotov cocktail. I added fuel to the fire, literally, emptying my lighter on the desk, making sure to douse some letters on top, including one from James Ritchie. I put it out with the fire extinguisher I brought with me from the shed. Then it occurred to me, I ought to make it look more like a break-in, so I busted out a window in the office. But even as I was doing it, I saw the pieces of glass tumbling onto the ground outside and realized I'd screwed up, so I went out and tossed them back in. That's everything, I think. After all that lying, don't you feel better now? Mr. Gray, we didn't secure your shed because it wasn't part of the original crime scene. Could we have your permission to check it now, to confirm your story? You need me to do that? A judge would give us a warrant easy enough, but you letting us skip that step, 
would be another gold star in your cooperation column. That's what I'm trying to do. Cooperate. Go ahead. My house is your house. Gray's story sounds way too strange. Let's check this area for collaborating evidence just to be safe. This looks like a deep impression, so it may be recent. Fingerprints are mostly moisture. They evaporate pretty quick in the dry air around here. It means these prints are recent. But looks like we've got two overlapping sets of recent prints. If one belongs to Gray, the computer may be able to separate them in the lab. Yuck, that's nasty. Definitely smells like gasoline. We can't use We can't use that here. Gray's confession is holding up. These are obviously the wine bottles, Ecuadorian vintage too. What do you want to bet this thread matches the rag in the house and the ones from the hangar? Is it my charisma that keeps you coming back for more, or just my brilliant intellect? Sorry, can't do anything with that. Sorry, can't do anything with that. Sorry, can't do anything with that. And survey says, we have a match. Same jet fuel used in Jason Gray's little indoor bonfire. Exact same composition. Once again, we have our same rare cotton germplasm. Hey, keep bringing me these samples. It's not going to be so rare. We 
We separated our twins and both have survived. We've got two sets of prints now. Yep, these are Gray's prints. They were entered in the system earlier. Stan Gins? Wonder if Gray can tell us why he's got a drug dealer in his backyard. You can't put that under the microscope. So much for Gray being Mr. Cooperation. Prints from an 11 and a half boot, about two sizes bigger than his feet. Make me happy. Tell me Gray's confession checks out. Sure, I can do that. Am I supposed to know? I think you do, and we're gonna prove it. What can I do for you? Good call. Maybe he can tell us why Mr. Gray's confessing and lying at the same time. Mr. Gins, there was a fire at the home of Jason Gray. You've been brought in for questioning on the matter. We've done some business. What kind of business? That's between me and my client. But I don't know from fires, okay? Out and about. Little walk around the neighborhood. That's still legal, right? Well, I own a pair of 11 and a half feet. You do the math. Yes? Sure, I can do that. You've been lying to us. You see, Mr. Gray, when somebody confesses, trying to help and all, but mixes in a lot of bull, well, we get frustrated. And me personally, I get cranky when I get frustrated. But we're willing to give you a chance to put us in a better mood. So let's play truth or dare. Just leave out the dare part. Yeah, name rings a bell. I think maybe he lives in my neighborhood. Don't get to know your neighbors like in the old days. Maybe you need a distinguishing characteristic of Mr. Gins to jog your memory. Like his being a convicted drug dealer, for instance. And Mr. Gins is trying to be cooperative, too. He started by telling us you're one of his clients. Well, like I said, he's a neighbor. I think he might have borrowed my mower or... <sighs> Look, I really didn't want to have to get into this. I'm going to level with you, really cooperate, but just remember, what I'm about to share with you could get me in hot water. I have a drug problem, a way out of hand drug problem, which is why my business has gone to pot, so to speak. Stan Gins is my supplier. Lately, Gins had been showing up at strange hours and he'd bring his low life friends along. Partying at my place was just sickening. On the night of the fire, I made a decision. No more associating with scumbags like Stan Gins. So I, well, I, I fired him. 
He didn't take it very well. He was really PO'd, bent out of shape. Plus, I'm sure he was high at the time, which didn't help. While I was in my office, Gins must have gone to my shed, looking to see what kind of grief he could give me. There was a knock at the door, and I opened it. And damn if it wasn't Gins, glaring at me, brandishing a blazing Molotov cocktail he'd thrown together. He was out of control. He threw the bottle, smashed my window to fan the flames, and took off. I ran out to my shed and grabbed the fire extinguisher. But then the wheels started turning. I could make the best of this bad situation if I rigged the scene to implicate Richie. I didn't want my drug problem exposed. And at the same time, I knew that if I implicated Gins, he'd kill me for sure. I'd be protecting myself and taking a competitor down with me at the same time. After the fire was out, I cleaned up the broken window, knowing I needed to make it look like a break-in to hide what had really happened. I tried to get all the bits of glass I could find and brush the dirt off before tossing them back into the office. And that's the whole sad, stupid, but true story. I tried to save my reputation. How am I doing so far? Well, both you and Gins will be going away all right. And you do have something in common. Neither one of you can hold on to his clients. We should have another chat with our friendly neighborhood drug dealer. Need me for something? Sure, I can do that. Listen, you play with drugs, you get high. Play with fire, you get burned. No percentage in the ladder. Hey, I said I was out catching some air. I may have walked by his house, but that's all. You know, Gray might have covered for you once upon a time. But you try to burn somebody's house down, and the loyalty gets strained. Going off on a good customer like that? You got a hot temper, Mr. Gins. Go to hell! I've got plenty of customers, but he torqued me off. Guy thinks he's better than me. He said my friends were scum. Imagine that. I should have torched him, not his crib. Smart mouth looking down on me. And him, a degenerate doper. Thank you, Mr. Gins. That's what we call a confession around our little store. And you know how nice it is having another satisfied customer? Looks like a solid arson case against Gins. As for the high-flying Mr. Gray, he'll come down to earth with obstruction of justice, arson, and insurance fraud charges. By the way, trainee, nice work out there. But take some time to throw back a cold one after work and relax. This job can be hell on your personal life. Now, go see Grissom. He wants to see you. It sounds like you showed some good instinct out there. But before you let it go to your head, let's take a closer look at how you did. Good work. Only a few things you left unexamined. Try to be more thorough next time. Patrol Officer James Garvey has been murdered. As a new CSI, this is your first cop killing. Unfortunately, it's probably not your last. Work fast and careful. Tropicana Avenue, go. Uh, apparently, Officer Garvey stopped to help a stranded motorist, or someone pretending to be. To serve and protect. <laughs> and sometimes, this is the reward. We'll never have more important work to do than this. Hey, before we get started, I want to introduce myself. I'm Nick Stokes. I've heard a lot of good things about you from Sarah, so let's work quick to nail this creep. Severe head trauma like this, something heavy, something hard's probably the weapon. We'll cast to the wound, it'll help determine what caused it. We can't use that here.
There's nothing special there. Beaten over the head, two gunshot wounds to the chest. <laughs> Man, somebody didn't want Officer Garvey walking away from this one. Hmm, no sign of exit wounds. You better check it for trace evidence before we collect it. There's no prints here. Someone could have been holding this tire iron as a weapon. At some point, this thread could have snagged on here if it brushed by their clothes. That tire iron may be our head wound weapon, which looks deep enough to cast, but let's be careful not to stretch the skin. Thirty-two caliber mag. Probably Garvey's own piece, but we'll have to confirm that. All of the rounds are accounted for. I'd say it wasn't fired recently. They'll be towing this baby away soon, so we need to get to work fast. There could be something important in here. It's blank, but maybe Greg can lift an imprint off it. This is another cop's ID, Jeffrey Deschamps. And check out the date of birth. Deschamps is a 72-year-old cop? I don't think so. Peculiar stain. Wiped, maybe? Be nice to know what it is. We can't use that here. There's nothing special there. Okay, Luminol says we got a blood stain. Tried to wipe it off, but like the man said, blood tells. Yes. Despite the power of the blow to the head, the officer was still alive, unconscious maybe, but breathing. The two bullets in the chest put a stop to that.
Both bullets entered through the chest. Stippling is consistent with being shot at close to medium range. One struck the left lung and lodged there, other hit the left second rib, deflected down through the stomach into the upper intestines. We recovered both rounds. Pretty recent. There's some early rigor mortis, I'd say no more than three or four hours ago. Pulling the scalp back revealed a basal skull fracture combined with conjunctival hemorrhaging. We have a forceful blow to the head, hard, slender object like an iron rod. Well, I'd say it's a pretty good match to the skull fracture. I can't help you until you find some solid evidence. Yes? Those oldies but baddies? 44 caliber, 30 to 35 years ripe. Of course, they could be reloads. Harvey's weapon, clean barrel, fully loaded, not fired recently. There were a few tiny spatters of blood on the tire iron. Matches Garvey's. This ID isn't legit. It's a forgery. Pretty good one, too. I used an electrostatic detection apparatus to see if the previous page's message made a big impression. Sort of like I do. Here's what came up. Tropicana Avenue, car on roadside, needs assistance. So you figure this blood came from the killer? No, I don't second guess you, Greg. I'd never hear the end of it. Wise move. We have a boar here, casting no aspersions on present company. This is Suscrofa, blood of a wild boar, pig blood. Sorry, can't do anything with that. The cast of the wound indicates something slim, tubular. Pig's blood again, genetically identical and a decay rate comparison is a match. Cotton, red dye present but faded. Got another sample I can compare it to? Hey, you can't scan that into the computer. Hey, you can't scan that into the computer. Hey, you can't scan that into the computer. Well, this is no shock. Our dead officer's prints are on his own weapon. I really don't like where this is going. Officer Jeffrey Deschamps killed along the roadside helping a motorist with a flat 30 years ago. Unsolved. M.O. Deja vu all over again. A tire iron. Pool of blood. Blank notepad. Murder weapon. A 44 Magnum. In the grass under the patrol car. On the upside, it's a lead. We should check the crime scene again, see if there's a gun under where the car was. Hey, you can't scan that into the computer. Hey, you can't scan that into the computer. I can't help you until you find some solid evidence. Looks like they towed the patrol car away. We got another echo of the Deschamps case here. 44 Magnum, could be 70s era. Serial numbers filed off. Gunpowder in the barrel. Mag short three rounds, one in the chamber. Probably fired recently, twice. This is a staged crime scene.
There's no prints here. Are you ready for this? Some freaks on CrimeChat.com knowing way too much about our cop killing. Hit the lab computer. I sent a link to the desktop to get you directly into the chat. Here's the ballistics report on our late officer's wounds. This 44 mag's a perfect match. You have your murder weapon. Sick. We can't find this guy fast enough. Yes? Sure, I'll cross your T's and dot your comms for you. Site owner Jack Riley, apartment on Mountain Vista Street, crosses Tropicana. Close to our crime scene. Mr. Riley? Jack Riley? That's me. What's up? We were at the Las Vegas Crime Lab. I'd like to ask you a couple of questions about this shooting near your place. Probably about as much as you. Thanks to Sutherland. Uh, maybe even a bit more since you probably don't study classic unsolved murders like the Deschamps case. The same as the other 4,000 some anonymous users who post at my site. Zippo. They don't use real names, you know? Listen, I don't mind cooperating, and I got nothing to hide, but I also know my rights. No warrant, no entry. You probably already know I do if you checked your records. But you should also know I reported it stolen a few months back. I had a party and somebody got in my gun case and helped him or herself. As for suspects, I had 35 of my closest friends over. You know there is, if you're a CSI or squad. Unique IP addresses identify the computer he was using. But I got privacy issues here with my users. No warrant. No IP address. Yes? Riley's hosting the website where somebody's bragging about this killing. Plus, Jackie Boy owns a gun that matches the murder weapon. Isn't a judge in town who won't let us check that apartment. Shock. Cop goes down, so does the Bill of Rights. Go ahead, go inside for all the good it'll do you. Caffeinated hacker fuel. He seems to have some brand loyalty. Condensation messes with the quality of prints we can lift. Don't know how useful these will be. We can't use that here. We can't use that here. This guy's into true crime heavy duty. Whoa, here's a book by Edwin H. Sutherland, late great criminologist. 
Damn, Sutherland again. Sicko was at the crime scene before we went back and found the murder weapon. Guy greets us with the warmth of a cobra, but check this out. It's like he's our biggest fan. I don't have anything else to tell you right now. Hey guys, what's up? starting to leak out to the news thanks to our friends at crimechat.com. Tell me you got something good. We can track the computer he posted from. Computer Lab UNLV, classroom building complex, where they teach criminal justice. He's hoping we'll be teaching some creep a class in that real soon. Let's ask the magic screen. Oh yeah, graduate, 10 years back. Criminal justice major. Professor Franklin, that you? Nick? Nick Stokes? <laughs> well, look at you. I'd ask how you are, but that's obvious. I thought you were still at Rice, sir. I didn't know you were at UNLV. Class is out, Nick. You don't have to call me, sir. Uh, department here had an opening in theory reconstruction. How could I refuse? Well, you wrote the book, literally. You'd be a boon to any faculty. Very kind of you to say, Nick. Especially since you're not fishing for a grade this time. And I understood you to be working in Dallas, CSI level one. Problems? No, no, I could have stayed, but it was time for a change, you know the chance to work with Gil Grissom. And to get out of the shadow of a certain Supreme Court justice also named Stokes? Maybe just a little. Have to envy you, my boy. Working in the field, solving real crimes. <laughs> Not some premature fossil working the academia beat for 25 years. Decent CSIs aren't that hard to come by. Now, great teachers, that's a rarity. You do my self-esteem a world of good, Nick. But that's not why you drop by, is it? I wish. Thing is, we have a cop killing. And believe it or not, there's a link to the university. You can help by answering a few questions. Somebody's not so good at cleaning up after themselves. But more importantly, we've now found the same brand of soda in both the computer lab and Riley's apartment. It might be hard to get good prints from a can, but it's worth a shot. This one right here. Earlier in the day, I couldn't say, but I just met with a student, John Laskin, going over some coursework. And uh, he was on that machine. Not, not to tell you how to do your work, but dusting for prints would be rather pointless with all the traffic in here. Laskin has been digging into various unsolved crimes. A uh, promising student, bright, doing well on my course. 
I believe he lives on campus. Surely your department has access to the university's housing database. Tracking him down should be child's play. Every lab on this floor is strictly for criminal justice students, and the computer lab is reserved for grad school level only. A little surprised you'd have to ask that question. That was my first big success. I wrote the book about that great unsolved case. Do you need my help? If you need to get in for further investigation, I can help. I have keys to the lab and the building itself. 24-hour access. Hey guys, what's up? What have we learned at the university? No problem. Mr. Laskin is a criminal justice grad student. No publications. Lives on campus. Oh yeah, we'll enroll him in my class. Now this is something. You know, studying this stuff is one thing. Books, abstract theory, famous cases. But this? A real interrogation room? Real CSIs. Real murder. You want to help? Absolutely. Interrogate away. No. Why? You find threads or something? Well, sure, no prob, but just be careful. I'm just a guy scratching by on a partial scholarship. Don't have much of a clothes budget. I log on now and then, but like any chat room, it's just people BSing. I got mounds of coursework, plus I'm a TA, you know, supervising labs. Not much free time. Monitoring a midterm. Intro to corrections, 30 undergrads. Hey, does this mean I'm a suspect? Cool. I, I mean, since I didn't do it, cool. This is like... Field research. Hey, it sounds dry, but it's fascinating stuff. A longitudinal study of criminal investigators and pathologists who've worked long-term on unsolved cases. Oh yeah, that's a classic. Unsolved for 30 years, you know. Can't imagine chasing a case for that long. Hey, this was great. Real honor. You find that killer. Drown that sucker in evidence. What do you need?
Yes. What can I do for you? Oh, yeah. We'll enroll him in my class. Well, sure, no problem, but just be careful. I'm just a guy scratching by in a partial scholarship. Don't have much of a clothes budget. What do you need? Using the microspectrophotometer, we get a fiber match on your red thread, but not a color match. Similar sweater, though, probably an older one. Email from Brass. Sutherland is chatting again. Every cop in town's heading over to UNLV to try and catch him in the act, including you guys. Go already. Similar, but not exactly the same. Craig's opinion's what we should trust. Hey, you can't scan that into the computer. Hey, you can't scan that into the computer. here and we're here now so let's process this place like a crime scene like the Laskin kids but older let's process this baby for evidence and get it over to Greg little white flakes probably danger from the owner we can't use that here We can't use that here. We're a little too close to pick it up. We can't use that here. We're a little too close to pick it up. What do you need? I'll warm up the thermocycler to amplify the DNA on this dandruff flake, but I need some suspect samples for comparison. You can't put that under the microscope. Can't scan that into the computer. Well, sure. Anybody with an alumni card does. I mean, I got library privileges and stuff. It's nice getting something out of going to college. All right, I'm going to tell you what happened. All you have to do is nod when I'm finished. You have an interest in forensics and started this chat room. Of course, you're hip that posting things from your own computer, well, that'd be easy to track. 
You want to post something anonymously, you go to another one, say, a computer on campus. You know your way around there, blend in easy enough, pick a machine away from any others in use, and get off on posting photos of crimes, like the murder you just committed. Are you high? I didn't kill that cop. You can't think that I'd do something like that. I'm into solving crimes, not committing them. Maybe you wanted to go up against the big boys. Oh, please. Give me a break. I didn't kill anybody. I would never kill anybody. Those Sutherland postings, those aren't mine. Really? Don't you have access to the college computer lab? No. My alumni card doesn't take me that far. I would need a computer account. It's extra. Check it out, you'll see. <laughs> Quit guessing. Stick to the facts. That's what CSIs do, right? Cracking a simple university login. That's what hackers do, right? You're a computer guy. By the way, don't leave town. You're still a suspect. I'm a grad. Starts and ends there. Well, I can't stop you. Knock yourself out. What can I do for you? Laskin's alibi checked out. He was supervising an exam. Cross this guy off the suspect list. We got plenty on him for a warrant. Go to his place and get your sample. Yeah, just because this guy was Nick's teacher doesn't give him a pass. Go back out to that school and see what his DNA teaches us. So it's not enough you make me aid and abet you guys invading my website visitors' privacy. You gotta invade the inside of my mouth too? Any other indignities while you're at it? Full cavity search maybe? You got the gloves for it. in my office, marking some papers. Can anyone substantiate that? A teaching assistant, maybe? A fellow professor that dropped by? No. I go to my office at that hour specifically for solitude. I was quite alone. Just what I read in the news. My phone has been ringing off the hook. Reporters asking me to comment due to my expertise with the Deschamps case. Is that why you're here? For what reason? Surely I'm not a suspect in your investigation. You know how it is, sir. Just covering the bases. We're back to sir, are we? And what if I said you need a warrant to perform that affront? I'd say we do have a warrant. Well, I was just making sure you weren't getting sloppy, Nick. You know, taking advantage of our... <sighs> anyway, go right ahead. Hey guys, what's up? I compared Riley's DNA to the dandruff flake. That flake is not your guy. The professor's DNA markers match the dandruff sample. Looks like the next class Franklin teaches is gonna be high school equivalency to the other inmates. I can't help you until you find some solid evidence. I can't tell you anything else at this moment. Hey guys, what's up? Hey, you can't scan that into the computer. Hey, you can't scan that into the computer.
Hey, you can't scan that into the computer. Now this sample does match the thread on the tire iron. Find the guy who used to be inside the sweater. You got yourself a link to the crime scene. Yes? The prof's DNA matches the dandruff on the sweater. Sweater fiber matches the thread snagged on the tire iron. No more plan hooky from justice for this creep. Let's get him. Finally, I'm being asked to consult on this case, being the expert and all. Frankly, I'd expected you to call sooner, but I'm happy to help you now. Sure. Consult with us on this cop killing. Consider the evidence. Which all points in your direction, Professor. I believe that's mine. I'm getting a little long in the tooth, but then who among us isn't? Throw it away if you like. We'll bag it instead. Whatever for. Ah, the Deschamps case. A true classic in the annals of unsolved crimes. I'm the great expert on the case, and even I couldn't come up with a solution. Not a single worthwhile clue is found. The proverbial perfect crime. Oh, certainly not. No fiber was found at the Deschamps crime scene. Not at the Deschamps crime scene, but at the Garby crime scene, sir, there was. On the tire iron. Young man, you don't need to call me sir. I appreciate the respect, but we're professionals here. Feel free to call me Edwin. Edwin? As in Edwin Sutherland? You must be new in the field if you don't recognize me, young man. Edwin Sutherland, the most acclaimed criminologist of all time. But then, aren't you a student of that pathetic, isolated old academic? That miserable failure, Professor Franklin? Oh, this officer who was killed recently. You'd like me to consult on the case? I must admit I've been giving it some thought. Why don't you share those thoughts with us, Professor? Sutherland? Glad to, young man. You see, this homicide is quite similar to the classic Deschamps killing. And I must admit, your mentor, Professor Franklin, did some respectable research on that case for a man of such average capabilities and limited intellect. Or did he? You see, your perpetrator was recreating the Deschamps murder, undoubtedly. The killer would have faked a flat tire and waited for help to come. It would only take a few minutes. Even in this tawdry day and age, the police serve and protect. The killer would have allowed the officer to draw close in order to take a good hard swing at him. But apparently he didn't notice a tiny thread snagging on the tire iron. The incriminating clue. When he was down, he finished him with a couple of quick rounds to the chest. Fast, relatively painless. The clues from the Deschamps case, of course, had to be replicated. The killer left a bit of blood near the body, crudely symbolic pig's blood. Gun under the car, few pages off the notepad. I made sure this was clear by publishing my findings on that quaint crimechat.com. But one must wonder how he would have so intimately known the details surrounding the original crime. Could he have been responsible for both? Nick? Nick? Well, seeing you, it's... It's like seeing my own ghost. My own long-lost conscience. Something you want to get off your chest, Professor? I... I just can't live with it anymore. My entire career built on one great lie. I was just starting out, wanting to make a name for myself, but you must understand, it was theoretical. What was, Professor? Killing that officer. Garvey? Deschamps. I wanted to see a crime from the inside out. I suppose every criminalist ponders the perfect crime. It was motiveless. Or at least the motive was so obscure that... Anyway, I did it all those years ago. You killed Officer Deschamps and built your reputation as an expert on a crime you committed yourself, and now you've done it again. What, try and recapture some of that old glory? Yes, yes. Nick, please, 
I couldn't help myself. Please, do something. Make sure I never do anything like this again. Help me. Professor, we'll see what we can do. I just reviewed the notes on your last case. Franklin apparently was racked with guilt, and the Sutherland sub-personality evolved to help resolve it. But it was your skills that bridged their gap and exposed Franklin for who he really was. Good job. Now let's evaluate your performance for this case. You investigated every possible angle on this case. It doesn't happen often. I'm impressed. Something's just come up. We've received a strange call, and I want you to check it out. Warwick Brown's the best we have in audio-visual analysis, and this gives you an opportunity to work at his side and benefit from his experience. He's in the lab right now. Hey, I hear you have a bomb, rookie. I'm Warwick Brown. I could use another pair of ears on this. Some crackpot called our dispatcher and left a vaguely threatening message. Normally, we could trace the call, but it's some kind of blocked number, prepaid cell phone card, maybe. We do know it was placed within the Vegas phone grid. I got this baby queued up on the computer. Las Vegas Criminalistics Bureau. I've got more work for you to do. I'm sorry, who is this? You never could keep good people. Who is going to help you now? Can, can I direct you to the- They can come find me themselves. Tell them I'm not done yet. It doesn't sound all that friendly, does it? Click to highlight the parts of the waveform. Let's see if we can isolate any useful sounds. Las Vegas Criminalistics Bureau. I've got more work for you to do. Sounds like it was digitally altered. No help. I'm sorry, who is this? You never could keep good people. Who is going to help you now? Hey, what's up with that? What was that, an elephant? Can, can I direct you to the... They can come find me themselves. Tell them I'm not done yet. Okay, you got your crowd of people, bells and electronic whistles. That'd be a casino. Recognize the melody right away. Okay, here's where you don't have to be as smart as Grissom. We search for the casinos in town with elephant acts. Seems we got elephants at the Monaco Casino, only in Vegas. You're the trainer here? Dirty job, but somebody's got to do it. You guys look official. We're criminalists from the Las Vegas Crime Lab. Our dispatcher caught a threatening call we think may have been made at the casino, here and back. The dirt around this barrel seems disturbed. It must have been moved. But without a warrant, we need an awful good reason to open it. saying much. He's about as helpful as his trainer was. I'm just in charge of the animals. Only the transport day manager can give you the permission to open that. Sorry. I don't think we've got time for that. Well, those barrels are owned by the casino. But that one? I'm pretty sure that one was up against the wall a little while ago. You knew in Vegas? Everybody's suspicious in this circus. But I wouldn't say I've seen anything out of the ordinary.
This is doubtful. If our caller used this, we could have traced it. But if Gris was here, he'd say, be thorough. So, we'll be thorough. What can I do for you? All you have is a mystery barrel at a casino? Sorry, you know I need something more than that to get you a warrant. What do you need? Nothing. Either our perp is in an aphis, or these prints are somebody else's. Try using a similar tool. We can't use that here. We can't use that here. Heat signature. Looks like somebody's in there. Let's open it. Now. Oh, damn. This is not good. Looks like our caller just graduated from prankster to murderer. Looks like she's broken out in a rash of some kind. It's concentrated around her nose. Was she sick? We can't use that here. We can't use that here. We can't use that here. There's nothing special there. Now, before we hand her over to the coroner, we should be sure we've gone over her body thoroughly for evidence. These stains, could be she picked them up from something inside the barrel. But they also could have gotten there when she first hit the ground. Or maybe she was dragged, pulled along through the dirt or whatever else she was lying in. Try using a similar tool. Try using a similar tool. We can't use that here. We can't use that here. We can't use that here. There's nothing special there. Try using a similar tool. Try using a similar tool. Try using a similar tool. We can't use that here. We can't use that here. The stain looks like soil. Sticky, brownish looking.
Well, somebody was in a hurry. This may be a long shot, but my gut says we ought to cast this. It's not complete. Might have been smudged by foot traffic. Nope, but I did step inside for some dinner about an hour ago. Ah, good. Hoping to talk to the two of you. Just finished my examination of your victim. Cardiac arrest due to severe anaphylactic shock. Bee sting allergy or similar anyway. No signs of an insect sting but it hit a respiratory system hard. I'll know for sure after the autopsy, but my educated guess, death due to a violent allergic reaction to something environmental. Hay fever, pulled her records after I saw the swelling, the redness around her sinus region. Did a nasal swab, pollen present. Recent, but hard to figure out from body temp since the barrel could have trapped heat. No rigor mortis yet, so it must have been within the last six hours. Hey, Greg, we need your help, pronto. I'm your man, my man. Dirt's some kind of plant soil. Different from the kind you'd find in an elephant pen. Sap. Oh, no offense, guys. Hard to narrow down just what type of tree. Best match I can make is a variety of red oak. Sorry. Can't do anything with that. What we have here is pollen, but, and here it gets interesting, not from a single species. Quite an exotic mix, really. Pinch of Spanish bayonet, dash of tiger aloe, sprinkle gently with choya cactus, and voila, a sneezer salad. Printed all the ingredients out for you. Check with Brass, though. He can help track all these down. Okay, not an exact match, but at least we're narrowing this baby down. Somebody driving a small pickup or SUV, that's who we're looking for. Hey, you can't scan that into the computer. Work this case hard and smart and make it go away, fast. It's not so much who she was as who her father is, Carlo Benedetti. She is, was, Sofia Benedetti. Daddy's a major Vegas player, and I'm not talking slot machines. Three casinos on the Strip, including the Monaco, two more downtown, a regional airline, and that's just Nevada. Right now he's in Singapore closing a deal. Numbers the mayor and our governor among his closest friends. So, you know, no pressure, guys. Last night, Sophia never showed up for a fundraising dinner. I got people out interviewing her friends, see what we can turn. Let you know if we get anything but a handful of air. 
Don't hold your breath. She lived with her parents and were already getting pressed by the family and his honor's office to keep this one under the radar and out of the papers. You give me a good reason, I'll get you in there. Otherwise, sorry. Blackfoot Daisy, Madagascar Periwinkle. Hmm. Not many indigenous to Nevada on this list. Sophia was reported missing yesterday, so it's not possible she could have traveled recently to all of the location sources of these species. You're looking for a garden? Try the desert demonstration gardens. Okay. The pollen in the victim's system tells us she may have been here shortly before she died. The greenskeeper reported seeing a woman matching Sophia's description around this area. Let's treat it like a crime scene and process it. Damn, it's locked. When you go through garbage at a potential crime scene, you sometimes find treasure, sometimes trash. There's no way to tell at this point which one it is, but let's look for trace evidence before we collect it anyway. We can't use that here. 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 There's no prints here. We can't use that 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 here. Let's take a sample of that dirt back to the lab, have Greg try and match it to the stains we found on Sophia's pants. We can't use that here. 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 There's nothing special there. We can't use that here. Small hair, but we could just be looking at someone's garbage. Tire treads in the dust. Try using a similar tool. Try using a similar tool.
We can't use that here. 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 The grass is flattened here. It's consistent with someone lying on it recently. We can't use that here. We can't use that here. We can't use that here. Luckily, the follicle was fairly complete, though I needed the thermocycler to amp the DNA. But I got a stronger sample now. On the other hand, a CODIS surge came up bupkis, and I'm waiting for Doc Robbins to send over the VIX DNA to do a comparison. Want to help speed things up? Go over and get that sample from the morgue. Sorry. Can't do anything with that. As used tissue goes, this one's fresh. Nasal discharge clear and yellow. Means not a cold. Allergy sufferer, most likely. But I found something else. White powder traces. Drugs? We're not talking coke. Not recreational, medicational. C5H9N3, Maximine. Experimental drug treatment used in clinical trials. Serious health issues. Malignant melanoma, certain forms of leukemia. What we have here, children, is soil. Perfect for our prickly pal, the cactus plant. Now prepare to adore me even more than you already do, for I have matched the sample from the garden to the dirt on the Vic's pants. Definite, but not bad. 70% match through the all season. Might help us build our case. Sometimes the magic works. We got an all season. Standard or the current L160 pickups, which means we've narrowed things down to the few hundred around the state. Cancer? Certainly not. This was a very healthy young woman, apart from her allergies. First, Maximine's a trade name. What you mean is histamine dichloride. It can be hard to detect that drug. We all naturally have histamines in our systems. In this case, however, our victim's levels were off the charts, which would have made her hypersensitive to certain allergic environments. A stroll through a garden could have killed her. Histamine dichloride is still an experimental treatment for cancer. Only pharmacists and patients in clinical trials would even have access to it. 
Timing is everything. I was just preparing one. Here you go. Hey guys, what's up? So here's the upshot. The victim's DNA matches the mucus in the tissue, thus the tissue is used by the victim. The hair is not a match, but its former owner might have well had contact with the victim, and not long before her death. We know the tissue our victim used had Maximine on it. So whoever wanted Sophia dead sprinkles the tissue with the drug and makes sure she uses it. Walking through the garden, Sophia's allergies kick in big time. She's thrown into acute anaphylactic shock as the histamines flood through her bloodstream. In seconds, she's dead. Hey guys, what's up? Yes? Not that pops up. That drug is in phase two. Only a few small test groups around the country. Just one on Town Center Drive in Summerlin. Las Vegas Crime Lab. You're the pharmacist here? Yes, Lita Callisto. Is this an investigation of some kind? Yes, it is, Miss Callisto. It's a murder investigation. We'd like your help. Few questions. Ben the Daddy. I'll check. Nope. We don't have that name on file. On the other hand, she could be one of our over the counter customers. Big part of our business. Maximine. I'm not familiar with that, but I'll take a look. Well, I guess we do carry it. Or anyway, we did. Had one order placed for that product not long ago, but it was filled, picked up. According to the database, Dr. Edward Wilkinson. Not for a while, but he's probably at his downtown office. Anything else? I have to finish some work. I get off soon. Hope I was of some help. Dr. Wilkinson, I'm Warwick Brown from the Las Vegas Crime Lab. We've got a few questions for you. Always glad to cooperate with the police, but you'll have to move it along. I have patients waiting. I knew her, yes, in that she was a patient. You do understand, of course, that medical information is privileged. Do you have a court-issued subpoena? Otherwise, I'm not free to discuss my patient's medical history. Maximine. I'm a GP, not an oncologist. What use would I have for Maximine? My second car is a pickup, L160 model, about a month old. You know, I'm not sure how to answer that. There are two spare sets, and my wife keeps one for emergencies. But the other one, about a week ago, I noticed it was missing from my keychain. Maybe it fell off. It must be in the house somewhere. In my garage at home, of course. Like I said, it's a second car. I, I did take some firewood out to my ranch recently. It is the first time I actually hauled anything in it. My wife and I were together, grocery shopping. It's a little ritual. Every week, something we do as a couple. I suppose she can back that up? Ask her. She should be at home right now. Be my guest. Yes, may I help you? Warwick Brown, Mrs. Wilkinson, Las Vegas Crime Lab. Your husband suggested we speak to you. What would you like to know? 
It's in the garage. Go ahead and look. You don't need a warrant. No one here's done anything. If you mean, has Edward ever violated doctor-patient confidentiality? Absolutely not. We're close, Edward and I, but his professional ethics, well, they're impeccable. I have nothing to say where that little tramp is concerned. That little tramp, Mrs. Wilkinson, has been murdered. That's why we're here. I don't wish that on anyone, murder. But some people bring bad things on themselves. Look, you're gonna find out anyway, so I'll tell you. She tried to come between Edward and me. She was a spoiled brat who thought she could have any man she wanted. Oh, yes. And there were plenty of witnesses at the grocery store where we were shopping. Is my husband in some sort of trouble? Do you have reason to think he might be? Of course not. Edward is as wonderful a husband as he is a physician. And you must know what an outstanding reputation he has in this community. I'm afraid I can't help you anymore. As advertised, it's an L160 4.6 liter V8 engine, standard transmission. Nice wheels for a second car, huh? Only a couple hundred clicks on the odometer. Tires, all seasons. We can't use that here. 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 Wood chips. Well, that backs up Wilkinson saying he hauled firewood in the truck. receipt for firewood. Remember the good old days when you chopped your own? No date on it, but the order was phoned in. If need be, we can ask Brass to pull phone records for us and find exactly when the good doc called in the order. Thick and sticky. Greg will tell us what it is. Hey guys, what's up? Sorry, can't do anything with that. This is your everyday, run-of-the-mill red oak sap. Now the sap you brought from the truck matches the sap on the Vic's clothes. Very likely she was in the back of the pickup. season tires from Wilkinson's truck. Not a big surprise. It's a perfect match to the tracks from the garden. The dock, or the dock's truck, that is, has spent some time here recently. They follow Sophia in the gardens and wait. Before they know it, the prey passes out. They toss her in the back of the truck and drive her lifeless body to the casino loading bay. There, they slide her body off the bed and into a barrel. Of course, this whole theory fizzles if Wilkinson picked up the firewood after Sophia's murder. 
We should prove that wasn't the case. Little bits of oak, dried apparently. Firewood. Getting a lot of pressure from the mayor's office on this one, as you might well expect. So, we put some extra resources on it. A worker at the Desert Gardens claims to have found something important. And Grissom is checking that out. He'll brief us when he gets back. Meantime, keep at it. Let me pull his cell phone records and see. He called for that order three days ago. But wait, just one minute. He was placing several calls a day to that pharmacy for a while there. That pharmacist and Wilkinson may not be telling all just yet. I think we can get much more than an interrogation, but that's a good place to start. Solid work, guys. Ms. Callisto, we would like to ask you a few more questions. Yeah. We'd like you to fill in a few of the blanks you left last time we talked. No, but I was before last week when he got paranoid about his wife finding out. Typical of the breed, you know. Promise me the moon, then weasels back to wifey. Now I don't exist to him. Who cares? Last week, you say? That's about the time the Doc's spare truck key did a David Copperfield and vanished. I'm sure that would be fascinating to someone who gave it down. He scribbled, I read his lousy writing, filled his prescription, he picked it up. I saw it parked outside the hospital last week. Nothing unusual about it? It's a pickup truck. It wasn't the Rose Bowl float. Well, there was some scuffing in the back, dented even. Maybe he'd been hauling firewood or something. Interesting you should bring that up. And I'm sure you'll tell me why. Dr. Wilkinson ordered that load of firewood two days ago. This is so fascinating. I'm starting to wish I took notes. You see, Lita, only somebody who'd seen that truck very recently would know about those scuffs and dents. Maybe somebody who used the truck to haul something heavy. A body in a barrel, say? You're crazy. Do I look like a killer to you? You're starting to. Sure. Knock yourself out. What can I do for you? No problem. He was playing doctor with Sophia, and his truck was at the gardens. Let's do it. Dr. Wilkinson, we're looking at the evidence and seeing a big arrow pointing in your direction. Make it easier on everyone, and yourself included, and just level with us. What do you say, Doc? Look, she was a beautiful young woman, and she flattered me. Ever hear of a midlife crisis? She was mine. My wife found out, and I realized how foolish I'd been and broke it off with the girl. I didn't tell you because of how it looked. And how does it look now? I know I didn't kill the girl. She just didn't mean that much to me, frankly. The evidence tells a different story, Doctor. What? Are you saying... Was Sophia's body in my truck? That's not possible. What kind of a frame-up is this anyway? It's outrageous. You know about that, do you? Okay, so I have a roving eye and maybe the rest roves along too sometimes. That doesn't mean I killed anybody, but uh, look, keep this from my wife, would you? Of course, haven't I been straight with you here? I'm trying to cooperate. Ask anybody, I take my civic responsibilities very seriously. Yes? Well, she had access to this truck. She didn't love the victim and didn't seem terribly surprised about the murder. A judge will okay bringing her in. Mrs. Wilkinson, you were not the biggest fan of our murder victim. 
And the details of the crime indicate you may have been involved in the murder. What an outrageous, ludicrous spectacle you people are making of yourselves. Oh, let me see. I believe it was... Oh, yes, that's right. Never. You've never driven it. Your husband says you have a spare set of keys. I do, but I couldn't drive it if my life depended on it. It's a stick shift, and I'm strictly an automatic female. No, can't say I have. She wouldn't be another one of Edward's little chippies, would she? <laughs> if so, she's free to get herself murdered, too, as far as I'm concerned. Why, certainly. Anything I can do to help the forces of justice in their efforts to disrupt our lives, trample our good reputation, and violate our privacy. Hey guys, what's up? And we have a winner. Lita's DNA matches the hair found in the tissue. The doctor is out. Hair from the tissue package doesn't match the guy. Not a match. Hair from the tissue is not Mrs. Wilkinson's. Need me for something? I think we can get much more than an interrogation, but that's a good place to start. Solid work, guys. Which you seem to find meaningful. I don't. It's meaningful, all right. Meaning you had access to the truck and to the tissue that killed Sofia Benedetti, and you even had a motive. If I had a grudge, and I don't, it wouldn't be with that little slut. That's right. Your grudge was with the doctor, not his rich girl patient. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it went something like this. That was an opportunity you were prepared for. You already forged the Maximine order in Wilkinson's name and sprinkled some of the stuff on a tissue packet, unaware a tiny hair of yours had drifted down onto one of them. The day Sophia went to the gardens, you gave her the package of tissues. She thinks you're being nice, but really, you've just signed her death sentence. You leave the pharmacy and go out to Wilkinson's and borrow the truck. You know he and his missus are on their weekly grocery trip. Just a matter of time, right? Before Sophia's allergies kicked in and she'd wipe or blow her nose with one of those deadly tissues. You were right there and waiting, ready when she collapsed. And you drove over and slid her up on the truck bed and into the barrel. The drop off at the casino didn't take long. And no one noticed as vehicles were coming and going. The truck was back in the garage before the Wilkinsons could even know it was missing. You're a smug pair, aren't you? You killed a young woman just to get back at your ex-lover. What's more smug than that? Stop. I'll bust out crying. Can I get you a tissue? Good job. Another sicko off the streets. Strange, though. I don't get why she tipped us about that body to begin with. It almost feels like she was playing with us somehow. Anyway. Well, rookie, Grissom's still out in the field, so I'll do your review on this case. Hey, good job. Couple of things you skipped over, but otherwise decent. We haven't heard from Grissom since he went out to Desert Gardens. His cell phone's down, he hasn't checked in. Gil can be eccentric, but frankly, this has me worried. On top of which, Lita Callisto has been making some oddball remarks about Grissom to the guards at the jail. You helped nail Lita, so this is your case. Yours and Catherine's. She's got the tenure and experience you can lean on. Now, either start with the desert gardens or go to Lita's apartment. We need to find out more about the enigmatic Miss Callisto, and we need to find Gil Grissom, period. We've run her, found no priors, not even a damn speeding ticket. Check her apartment. Maybe you'll come up with more than we did. For what little good it did, yes. She's recently used an acid-based compound to burn off the core ridge details of her fingers. No unique scarring, either. 
Best we got out of her is partial, so naturally Aphis spitting back out is unknown. She keeps dropping cute, oblique hints that don't add up to anything much, just enough to amuse herself. My gut says, that witch knows plenty. Ah, uh, it's the geniuses of CSI. Missing something? Mislay someone? Please, let me know what I can do to be of assistance. It's too bad you're not serious, because that might help your situation. I'm enjoying my situation. I'm content in my own company, and my needs are simple. And as for entertainment, I can picture your frantic efforts to recover your fearless leader. That's quite sufficient to pleasantly pass the time. You may not have that much. Nevada has the death penalty. You might consider cooperating. You know, I could tell you, but I have far too much consideration for your position. You see, if people like me just went around admitting things, you'd be out of a job. Well, I didn't kill him. Yet. Wouldn't it be interesting, though, if you could sit in a cell like this and still murder someone miles away? I would never spoil the theory you work so hard to develop. It's like when a child does a finger painting, you don't point out the deficiencies. It's unkind. of stuff in here. Let's get started. Cap shut tight on a bottle of unidentified liquid. Broken spine indicates a favorite passage, or at least a stopping point, by the reader. It's a passage about the Greek tradition of burying loved ones with a silver coin in the mouth. Payment for the ferryman. Hear that before? We can't use that here. There's no prince here. There's no prince here. There's nothing special there. We can't use that here. Greasy substance smeared here. Got kind of a medicinal smell, wouldn't you say? It would appear Lita was rather selectively getting rid of certain papers. One looks like a car key, but the other just can't be sure. Some worn down markings on it, but can't make out what it said. Not much left here. Wonder if there's anything it can still tell us. We can't use that here. Date and page number are still visible. Maybe we can locate the original article. Burned badly. Can't make out anything it said. We can't use that here. We can't use that here. 
There's no prince here. There's nothing special there. Old photo album. Story of somebody's life. Looks like something used to be under here. Traces of the image bled onto the laminate. Newspaper clipping, maybe. Greg should be able to analyze this, maybe even enhance the image. It's got one of those prepaid phone cards you get at convenience stores. Didn't Lita make a call after dropping the Benedetti woman's body off? No prints worth lifting. Phones don't get cleaned, and there's always overlapping prints. Can't pull enough points for proper comparison. Casino chips. Didn't Sophia have a couple of these stuffed in her mouth? Catherine Willows, Las Vegas Crime Lab. My associate was out here earlier, you'll recall. We're continuing our investigation, and we have some questions. Who knows? Maybe I'll have some answers. What evidence? I didn't call anybody. I sure didn't call the cops. A call wasn't placed from here to our crime lab less than a half an hour ago. Lady, our staff went home after you people wrapped up that other investigation. I'm the only one still working. You're looking at the only nightcrawler left in this garden. No, been real quiet. Few drive throughs few pedestrians strolling by. Nothing unusual. No, ma'am. You know, once it starts getting dark, you don't get a very good look at people coming around here. Sometimes you don't want to. Afraid not. Wish I could have helped you out some more. Let's see if anything new has been added around here that might give us a lead on what happened to Gil. Grissom would be right at home with these creepy crawlies. Try using a similar tool. Got an impact here. We can't use that 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 here. Tiny traces of paint. Based on height and proximity to the road? Vehicle impact, wouldn't you say? These look like fresh tire tracks to you. Wide, like a truck's. And Lita used a truck before.
Notice how the tread's been compromised? Whoever peeled out of here must have been in a hurry. Loose dirt was thrown back over their own tread marks. That's all I know. Wish I could help more. We got a code red, Greg. Grissom's gone missing, possibly abducted. Okay, Kath. Everything else goes on the back burner. I won't be happy till Grissom's standing there humiliating me again. Medicated skin cream, calcium gluconate gel, topical antidote to treat hydrofluoric acid burns. Like someone with access to a pharmacy. Automobile paint, fairly common color, particularly on current truck series. Lita used Dr. Wilkinson's truck in the Sophia Benedetti case. I'm sure that's no coincidence. Sorry, can't do anything with that. Okay, it's newsprint, and the date and page number are visible. You'll need to do a Lexus search for the article. By stabilizing the charred remains of the document with the pyrrolene polymer treatment, I could run latent lithium processes on it without destroying the ashes. It's an apparent suicide note, and get this, Written on Champagne Hotel stationery. Champagne Hotel. As in the Yardstrom case, Grissom worked? None other. Brass needs to know about this. Lucky for you, you didn't open this up and catch a whiff. Chloroform. Enough missing to knock somebody out? Absolutely. Once inhaled, the chemical enters the bloodstream through the lungs, unaltered by the liver, reaches the brain in seconds, and it's sleepy time. This key matches the type used by a few truck manufacturers. That's all I can tell you about it. The markings on the key were worn down, but I enhanced them. Here's the lucky number, 10072. The laminate bore traces of newspaper ink, transferred from the article that used to be underneath it. I enhanced the image and found a wedding photo. And guess who is the blushing bride? Lita. Oh yeah, our Looney Tunes killer, on her way to her honeymoon. Somebody was a lucky guy, huh? No man was living in that apartment, so we can assume a breakup. But Callisto may be Lita's married name. Casino chips. Nothing special about them. Even Gil Grissom would keep his distance from these bugs. What we have here is a blowfly larva with a taste for living flesh. Cochleomia hominivorax the human eater. Dangerous? The 150 or so people killed by him over the years would say so. But these things are uncommon. Eradicated in the States back in the 50s, though you can still turn them up in Mexico and points farther south. Anybody studying or researching them around here you know of? Not in Vegas, nowhere recently. University of Nebraska a couple years back did some cryopreservation research. See how long you could freeze the larva without killing them. Not what I'd keep in the kitchen freezer. Hey, you can't scan that into the computer. 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 Hey, you can't scan that into the computer.
Hey, you can't scan that into the computer. Oh, now this is something. Subject of the original article, Sophia Benedetti. Charged with possession of controlled substances a few years back, but we found no record on her before. Hmm. Nothing definitive. We need a better comparison. Hey, you can't scan that into the computer. Hey, you can't scan that into the computer. They're even better looking when you get close. You can't put that under the microscope. 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 We can't use that here. We can't use that here. Ground's a little soft here, wet. Underground sprinklers must have come on recently. Sorry, can't do anything with that. Size 10, Gil's size, and it matches his brand. Good bet these are his footprints. me for something? Well, she doesn't have a Nevada wedding certificate, but I can do some out-of-state digging. Gutter. Murphy. Lita Murphy. Most people come to Vegas to get hitched. She left to do the job. Why not ask me to search all the Jones, Smiths, and Johnsons, too? Get a little more specific, and maybe I can help you. All you have is that suicide note on hotel stationery. Sorry, that's just too thin. What I can do is let you look at some of the evidence from the Yardstrom and Benedetti cases. Here's the murder weapon, the ligature. Maybe there's something more to learn. Aphis came up blank on these partials from the medicine bottle in Kylie's apartment. Here's the casino chips we found in Sophia's mouth. That Greek money angle may make them significant. Here's the money we found in Kylie's mouth. Too many overlapping prints for us to get anything useful. That's enough to get you started anyway. Build a stronger link to Lita and I'll get that hotel reopened for you. Sure, I'll get you the prints from the garage you lifted. Those look like the best ones. Hey guys, what's up? Sorry, can't do anything with that. Sorry, can't do anything with that.
Hey, you can't scan that into the computer. Hey, you can't scan that into the computer. Hey, you can't scan that into the computer. The ligature has traces of that same cream from Lita's apartment, calcium gluconate gel with heavy aloe vera. That cream was not over the counter, it was homemade. This may get us back into that hotel. These chips match the type you turned up at Lita's crib. I ran a bunch of different tests, didn't come up with anything. Sorry, guys. Set of prints, old album like this, could have been here a while. Hey guys, what's up? This is one of those prepaid cell phones. No way to check the owner and the memory was cleared. Software recovery tools came up with a big fat goose egg. Sorry, can't do anything with that. Good news is we got a complete set of prints on the photo album. Bad news is no hits on the APHIS database. The fingerprints on the medicine bottle match the ones on the photo album, so Lita dispensed these meds to Kylie before giving her fingertips the acid treatment. Nothing more to say to you. Hey guys, what's up? Okay, now we have a match. Wilkinson's truck made a return trip to the scene of the crime. Okay, how about a workable theory about what's become of Gil? Well, after Lita was questioned at the pharmacy, Grissom got his invite out to the gardens. Right, so even in the first interview, Lita figured we were on to her. Pretending to work at the gardens, she calls Gil reports new evidence to perk his interest. She borrows Wilkinson's truck, lays in some of these flesh-eating bugs, and parks in the gardens, waits out of sight. When Gil arrives, he spots the truck, checks it out, and spots the insects, and has a typically grisom closer look. Lita, dressed like a worker, maybe, chloroforms him from behind. There's a struggle. A few bugs get jostled from the truck. Lita holds her rag over Gil's face till he's out.
Yes. Prints on Lita's photo album match those on Kylie's medicine bottle, and Lita's medicinal cream is on the murder weapon. Yeah, that'll fly. I know a judge who'll give us the warrant we need. Treads match, huh? Good enough for me. Go. Back again. More trouble, or you want info on my weekend package? This is my first time to your lovely establishment. Catherine Willow's criminalist, Vegas Crime Lab. Well, it's not the first time for your partner there. Right, sport? We kind of bonded. When I was getting pelted with questions about that Kylie brought getting bumped. Yes, well, that's very touching. What is this? A recurring nightmare? Read my lips. Only person I saw was Kylie. She stuck with the same room. It was the guys that was always different. This some kind of joke? One of them hidden camera shows? Look, I told you everything I know already. Now, if you don't mind. All right, let's see if there's anything that was overlooked. Let's try her computer. Let's look at these appointments in terms of the evidence we've already gathered. There's a Murphy here. Lita's maiden name, Bernard Murphy. We need to check it. Let's take a printout. Dr. Wilkinson, I'm Catherine Willow's CSI. We're picking up on the previous investigation and need to ask you a few more questions. I thought you people were holding Lita Callisto for Sophia's murder. We are, sir, and we're sorry for the trouble we've caused you. Oh, well, that makes it all better, doesn't it? You throw my life into turmoil and you tarnish my professional reputation. Why wouldn't I be thrilled to help you people out any way I can? Dr. Wilkinson, we have reason to believe Lita Callisto has committed other crimes, perhaps other murders, and we do need your cooperation. Well, all right. Anything to help keep that lunatic female locked away. Being torn various new gaping bloody orifices by my wife, thanks to you people. Still in my garage, isn't it? Do you need to look at it? I'll walk you back there. Anything is better than staying in the path of my wife's tongue. Well, what in the... Honestly, it was here. You had no idea it was missing? If I'd known, I'd have reported it stolen. Lita. Crazy damn... Yes. Yes, she could have. She must have come back for it again. Thank you, Dr. Wilkinson. We do appreciate your cooperation. We'll take it from here. What do you need? Sorry, can't do anything with that.
No match. But all that means is that Bernard Murphy didn't have a criminal record. Need me for something? I'll give it a shot. Well, Bernard Murphy worked at the Washoe County Crime Lab some years back. Let's bring his file and see. Dismissed a few years ago for breaking evidentiary collection procedures. Whoa, his dismissal involved a drug raid at Sophia Benedetti's home. And, oh man. Guess who was called as a procedural expert at Murphy's disciplinary hearing? Gil Grissom. I can see if there's any record of him. Holy. Bernard Murphy committed suicide last week. I'll send out an APB right now. Maybe somebody will spot it, and it'll lead us to Gill. thinking of Karen. Karen Yardstrom? I'm thinking of a number between 1 and 10. It's your IQ. My father had been through a lot. And the last thing he needed was some little tramp to use and abuse him. What happened? Did your father think he had a girlfriend and found out he was just another notch on the bedpost? Ooh, your insightfulness takes my breath away. Kylie drove him to suicide, and you killed her for it. That sounds like an opinion. You see, a good investigator would be more interested in facts. How would that be possible? Gil Grissom is so brilliant. One of the top CSIs in the nation. Surely a mere slip of a thing like myself couldn't trap him using a few bugs as bait and reel him in. Not a big fish like Gil, man. What a triumph for you to have figured that out, and it only took you forever. Well, isn't that obvious, considering present company, because of the incompetence of this place and its subpar staff? From what we hear, it was your father's incompetence that got him dismissed. My father was a brilliant man, a dedicated, underappreciated investigator who misguidedly gave his life to this job. And look at the competence of his peers. Sad. It's just sad. Really? Then what was the real reason for his dismissal? Politics, corruption, the well-connected Mr. Benedetti. He wanted his daughter to walk, so he paid some of Vegas' finest to tamper with the evidence. Got the case thrown out. In the process, my father was framed into taking the fall. I can assure you this department would thoroughly look into such a thing. Your precious Grissom was there. Did he look into it? He has no feel, no feelings for the human species. We're less than bugs to him, literally. And no one wanted to stand up to Benedetti. That left my father to take the blame. My father was everything to me. The only one who understood me. The only person on this earth I was ever close to. And now he's gone, forever. Job well done, CSI. He took his own life, and it was not over the job he lost but the woman he lost. If the people around him here at CSI had stood up for him, given him the benefit of the doubt, he wouldn't be driven into the arms of that showgirl slut. He'd be alive today showing all of you how to do this job. 
I lost my father because Benedetti's daughter was a crack addict and Papa was covering up for baby. My father took the fall for that poor little rich junkie. And that's why you killed her? I don't remember saying I killed her. I will point out that the scales of justice have achieved a certain ironic balance. I lost my father. Benedetti lost his daughter. Thanks to that APB on Wilkinson's truck, a patrol officer spotted a vehicle of that description heading into a U-Keep self-storage lot. But that's several hundred storage rooms, and I can only get a warrant for one specific room. I'm ahead of you on this one. Grissom believed the evidence might have been tampered with and went on record as to Murphy's possible innocence. But the mayor at that time buried Grissom's report, most likely due to the Benedetti family's influence. I can give the company a call. They do have a locker registered to that key number, but it might just be a coincidence. It's Unit 417. Let's hope your theory is correct. Gate's locked. Can't force entry without a warrant, so we have to find a link between Lita and these lockers, and fast. We can try the key we found in Lita's apartment. If it's a locker key, maybe it'll also open the front gate. There it is, over there, Unit 417. This could be it. Let's try the key on it. It's jammed. Hey. Hey, I'm in here. Did you hear that? There's someone inside. It's got to be Grissom. Let's find something to pry the door open with. This might be good to get some leverage on the door. We'll still need something else from around here to use this with. We can use this as a fulcrum. Let's take it. Great. We can use these to pry the door open now. Those bugs, the flesh eaters, they're all over him. Catherine. Gil, we're here. Everything's all right. Lita, the, uh, the Benedetti case. Murphy was fired because... I know, Gil. For once, I'm way ahead of you. You saved my life. I had help. Our newbie here came through big time. Sure did. I think, uh, maybe we can declare your probation period over. Well, you could say we worked the bugs out. And now we'll be going to the hospital, Mr. Grissom. We're gonna check you out like the walking crime scene you are. It's time for your evaluation. I've spoken to your fellow CSIs. Sarah, Nick, Warwick, Catherine, all give you high marks. Greg and Doc Robbins are also impressed. Devin Rogers is a free man now, cleared of any involvement in the Kylie Yardstrom killing. As for me, well, Let's say I'm glad you were on the Callisto case. Yes, Jim. Yes. Really? I'll be right there. It never ends. Good work. Only a few things you left unexamined. Try to be more thorough next time. Now you've finished all the cases, but there's one more set of bonus material if you can go back and complete them all with 100%.